So I am Rajesh Kushalka. I am representing uh, this lab, Integrated Development Lab. So this is a, only one of the kind of the lab here in the internship, which has got both projects, which is hardware as well, uh, as, well as the software part. So that's why the name is also coming as Integrated Development Lab. So just for the introduction, I'll just uh, tell you more about uh, this lab. The, previously, it was called as a Affordable Solution Lab. And uh, uh, since Affordable Solution Lab has grown up widely in many aspects, so we thought uh, we'll separate ourselves from this lab and call ourselves as Integrated Development Lab. The same motto is again there for this, this lab. Whatever the hardware side is there, whatever the current price in the market for that particular device is there, how you can achieve at the one-tenth of the price. So that was Professor Fatak's uh, vision towards it. And uh, it was never achieved, but definitely it was uh, around divided by 15 to 20, it was always achieved. For example, uh, I'll just give you, uh, there was a project from LIC, uh, which was a RAID project where uh, all the life insurance corporation uh, branches were able, having a centralized data, has to be merged. So that project uh, individual, uh, what you call branch, used to cost almost around uh, 20 lakh rupees or something like that. But uh, when we approached uh, to the project, so the device used to cost almost around 4 lakh rupees. The project came to IIT Bombay to us and we were able to achieve the same hardware device with the same functionality and everything around 60,000 rupees. So this was the achievement that we could have gained in this lab. So I will just briefly introduce uh, with the uh, last year projects which have been conducted uh, by the lab. So this was a version, uh, robot control version one. This was done by a group of uh, four interns in a time frame of 15 days. That's all. So they have been allocated to some other projects, but uh, so this project just came uh, in the mind and we thought we'll just take out four interns from the group and we try to achieve this part. So as you can see, there's a camera, there's a small robo which is roaming. So the objective was, to control this robo using uh, wirelessly through Akash tablet or any other dev Android devices. So the video streaming used to go live. So wherever the robo moves, the video streaming would be there. But as you can see, the camera which is mounted on the robo, it is almost around 15,000 rupees. So the cost which we were expecting and all this thing was not achieved. So that's why we came with the next version, which is uses our normal camera and it is using Raspberry Pi huh? uh, on the system which uh, runs a full-fledged Linux on it. And we were able to achieve the same thing, almost around 3,500 to 4,000 rupees. So last year, uh, we have this all-terrain vehicle version 1 and 2. So we have taken the same robot concept uh, forward and thought of uh, integrating various sensors on it, like temperature, humidity, uh, GPS, and uh, uh, other sensors. As you can see, there's a camera also on it, so it will uh, live stream the po uh, position, uh, uh, stream the videos, give you the exact GPS location. You can map your robo for mo moving in a particular coordinates and all this thing. So it has to move, go forward this much, turn right and all this thing. So it will act accordingly. So it can be programmed from the ta tablet itself. So all these uh, uh, projects which I'm going to talk are directly or indirectly linked with our application which is going to be developed on Android based. So that's why uh, a few group of people will be working totally on a hardware side, how to integrate various sensors and all this thing. And rest of the other people will be in, uh, working on the Android platform. So how this uh, sensors data which is coming, how I'm going to display it on my tablet. So it's more of an access device. Android uh, devices are going to be more of an access device to control and to get the data. So one more project I would like to uh, tell you which was uh, done is uh, Clicker. So let me give you a brief introduction for the Clicker. Clicker is a student response system or an audience response system. So we have come up with a version 1 in 2001. As you can see, it's a small uh, device which has got any four options, A, B, C, D. Yeah, first I'll let me introduce what exactly is the student response system is there. Everybody is familiar with uh, uh, the audience poll in Kaun Banega Karodpati, okay? 
So there, Mr. Bachchan says uh, one question, and all the audience presses some A, B, C, D options, and immediately the answers are flashed on the screen. How many people have given A, B, or C? Whatever is the answer. The same concept we are trying to use it in the education also. We have there is no mechanism till date okay, where the students uh, teacher can get instant feedback from the student about the understanding level of the concept which has been taught in the class. Today I go, go for a lecture, it's a one hour lecture, teacher teaches it, whatever I don't know what students have understood or not, gone. Somewhere after one month or two months, uh, teacher conducts a class test or whatever is there. So that time the teacher comes to know the understanding level of the students. Yeah, out of the 100 students, only 50 students were able to score properly in the class. The rest of the two were below average. But what about this device if it is there with a teacher during the class session? So teacher, when uh, during the one hour lecture, teacher teaches the question, uh, uh, takes uh, topics and posts a quiz on that particular topic. So instantly teacher gets a feedback. So if I'm not wrong, there are a lot of uh, universities in US and UK are using it for their uh, daily activities during the class hours. So the cost, as I'm saying, the cost we thought for the cost, uh, what will be coming. So the version one cost was almost around uh, uh, 2,000 to 3,000 rupees, which was coming. We thought of uh, making this uh, the version one and we have been able to achieve around 600 rupees the device cost. So it works on simple RF 2.4 gigahertz mechanism and uh, the cost we were able to achieve around 600 rupees. But there were some limitations, uh, there was no feedback mechanism on it, okay, whether I pressed A, B, I'm not able to get that feedback. So there was a lot of reluctance from the student side, okay, we are not able to get the acknowledgement not a feedback, nothing like that. So we thought of uh, coming to version two in 2010. So where a small uh, display was introduced in it. So where it used to display which class I'm attending, what I'm, uh, 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 whether I pressed uh, options of A, B, C, D, whatever is there. Since I was having a display, I thought uh, we should elaborate uh, more on the keypad also. So we give the, the option, we thought we can introduce with the numeric keypad also with the option of uh, poll, yes and no, true or false. And uh, there's a new thing which we thought of introducing is raise hand. So there is a lot of uh, reluctance in the class of the raise hand and all these things. So we thought we'll put a raise hand. So teacher console will come to, yeah, this particular student has raised the hand. So you can ask the question afterwards also and during the class also you can ask. Once the Akash project came to IIT Bombay in 2012, so all the hardware activities, which was version one and two, which was running on uh, 2.4 gigahertz was stopped and we thought of putting the whole application on Akash tablet. Since Akash is already equipped with uh, uh, Wi-Fi network, so we thought of introducing to this one, uh, the Akash tablet. But there was some limitation in the first version of Akash and uh, the version of the software what we have developed so that's why we shifted back uh, to the new version called 4, uh, which is enhanced version uh, of uh, the software part only. And uh, right now, this all this uh, are used in all the remote centers in I, uh, and also in IIT Bombay. So this is just a simple uh, user interface that is uh, visible to a student when he logs in. So you have the quiz, poll, report, and raise hand. So the raise hand out here is the moment you press the raise hand, you get a dialog box. You can pose the question directly without raising the hand. So directly on the teacher console, the question appears. So without disturbing the class and raising the hand, the teacher can just see, yes, so and so student have already asked this question. Reading the question, he can answer it directly there. So these are the few responses which are collected. So uh, you can see there are quiz one, two, three, four held. So how many people have given right, wrong? So these are the console side where teacher side is get, getting it. In the morning, Professor Fartak has uh, introduced that we have almost around 300 remote centers. We conduct this kind of uh, uh, quizzes with uh, this 300 remote centers also. The quiz is launched from IIT Bombay. All the remote centers receive the quiz at the same time. The students or the faculty who are attending the course, they give the quizzes uh, answer there. And individual files, remote center files are sent back to IIT Bombay. 
So where I can see now in the first side overall performance where I can see that yeah, so many remote centers have given the answer, how many people have given wrong and right answers. I will break down to that part quiz wise response. How many people have given right for the first quiz, second quiz and all this thing. The last is remote center wise. So I have this remote center 1, 2, 3, 4. I can individually map it for the remote center. Yeah, this remote center was performing very good. This remote center was not performing very good. So there I can break down from the data and analyze that part. Ki, yeah, what's the problem? Whether the, it, the audio video was not proper or what is the issue with why the center is not responding properly. So this is the power of uh, the reports which are generated from these devices. Now, final, the, this project offer for the interns this year. First is the quadcopter. So everybody is aware for the quadcopter. So we are going to, uh, it's not just a flight simulation that we are do, going to do or play around with the toy. So there is a uh, lot of thing has to be introduced uh, in this, whatever I have told, all terrain vehicle. Huh? The various sensors which are being incorporated here to put it on this quadcopter. Previously, I was just moving on the ground and taking the various temperature or humidity levels. Now you have to take the humidity or temperature levels in skies. Okay, so this is the hardware part which has to be developed. Of course, we are having uh, these devices with us, and but uh, the hardware has to be reprogrammed with the various uh, sensors on it and integrate the whole devices. Again you have to have a nice communication protocol between the ground station and the quadcopter which is running. Okay, The ground station of course is going to be developed on the Android platform again. So it's more of uh, the task, the three major tasks uh, in this session is create an autonomous quad rotor equipped with the cameras and GPS sensors on it. So there's a hardware part. The greater, uh, create a ground station application on Akash telemetry. So through this devices, you are going to control, not with a remote control, what you are going to get it occasionally. So you are going to have this tablet through which you are going to control, move forward, back, lift, thrust, or whatever is going to be there. Allow the desired travel path specified by the user from the tablet. So as previously it was there in uh, the all-terrain vehicle, here you can give a desired path since it has got a GPS coordinates and all this thing with it. You can do that so it can roam around and come back to the same position again, okay? Now, second one is the th project is general health monitor. So motivation was to create a device that can enable a person to check his own health parameters, portability and easily wearable. Nowadays, as you can see, there are lots of uh, happenings in the wearable devices. So what is that fellow? Samsung Galaxy S5 has come up with the straps. So what exactly is going to, it's just going to, uh, give you a very small amount of information that mobile uh, is receiving the time or some message has been received. But there are a lot of uh, uh, health parameters that can be incorporated also. Few, many people, in fact, the Sony variables and many of the mobile devices are working on it. And uh, which are going to come out is to measure the body temperature. So to measure uh, uh, the heartbeat pulse oxy and all those things. So I'll just uh, tell you what exactly we are going to do. So the future of the wearable devices, by 2018, the market of the wearable devices industry might exceed to 19 billion in US. That was the report which is published in 2014. So as you can see, the wearable version one, so all the devices are outside right now. So various, the BP is there, blood pressure monitoring is there. You have a simple uh, strap which measures uh, the heartbeat or uh, you have the accelerometer which is on it. So which measures the fall for the old age people. So it measures the fall of a person or anything. So it communicates with your uh, mobile again. All these devices are Bluetooth enabled. It communicates ultimately with your phone devices and uh, whatever the application is uh, defined. Okay, now call this doctor or call this person at home or whatever is there. So it will inform accordingly. So wearable two, which is there. So yeah, this fellow is named as Iron Man and Invisible Man. So, so all the devices are going to be inside. Many of the companies uh, like Adidas and Nike, 
uh, coming with this kind of variable uh, devices which incorporates within this thing and it gives you how much burned uh, calories have been burned and all this thing during the exercises. So project flow, a person health data recorded, synchronized with the, thing, uh, with the server. So individual data will be logged in the personal phone or anything. So we have to sync all this data to a central server also. Server data is accessible to the doctor, which are available, uh, means you can define it. Can monitor a patient based on each user's unique ID. So it has to identify from the server side. Uh, from this is data has come from Rajesh, this is data come from Mayank or anybody else like that. So the server has to recognize each and every data, whatever I am sending. So general health monitor parameter, what we thought of, parameter we measured is ECG, pulse oxy, body temperature, blood pressure, respiratory rate, and peak flow meter. These are the things what we thought of uh, to incorporate uh, during this uh, internship. The basic system block, uh, we have this Akash tablet. We have connected to server through Wi-Fi or uh, through network, whatever is there. So you have a central controller which has this ECG, oxy, temperature, and everything on it, okay? It is connected through you through Akash tablet through uh, or any other devices, Android devices, through Bluetooth or USB. Right now we are going to try it only with the USB part. eSankal, the data equation system on Akash. So what is that? Uh, so various, again, this is a new, uh, another project. So, uh, in medical also we are getting some data. It's a sensor data. In quadcopter we are also getting some data. It's a, again a sensor data. Now, why this is a separate device for uh, DAS is there. Again, I'm saying this is again a sensor data which is going to come uh, like uh, the pressure, weight, temperature, IMU, GPS, and all this thing. Uh, it can be captured and stored on the local devices here. But each and every, suppose we have a standardized thing. This particular port, I'm connecting a temperature sensor, but tomorrow I want to uh, remove the experiment. It's going to be a generalized experiment board for the colleges also. So I want to remove this temperature sensor, I want to put some other sensor on it. So the ports are to be reconfigured automatically. Or the device has to be programmed. So now I have connected a uh, humidity sensor instead of temperature sensor here. So how we can do it? So again, this has got two parts, the hardware side development and, and again on the Android side development. So Complete server so is configured, as I've told you, it has to be configured environment to acquire the sensor data. Multi-platform system is to be integrated into a single unit. Hardware plus software code design to be created end-to-end -end product. The sensor modules designs on the board interfacing sensors to uh, computing platform. Server module basically uh, we are going to use here uh, BeagleBone Black. So have you uh, heard of all these devices, BeagleBone Black, uh, Raspberry Pis and all this thing? Uh, is anybody familiar? So you have worked with Raspberry Pi? Okay. Beagle Bone? No. Here till uh, last year, uh, we were using uh, Raspberry Pi and we were using Node.js for the server. Okay. So you are going to be uh, using the latest technology of the server side also. Now last project is Anuduino. What Anuduino is? Anu, what we call is an atom, is the smallest particle. So, do you know the smallest particle? Uh, Arduino is uh, a tiny series, which is a tiny 85. Have you worked with uh, Arduino platforms, everybody? Well, I'm talking for mostly the hardware people who are there. Okay. So, this is the platform. So, uh, on the that side, you can see the USB connected. This is a small board with the uh, 80 tiny 85 is there. And we have a separate board where separate uh, various sensors are attached. So this sensors, this is going to let uh, teach how to connect sensors and how to write a basic program uh, using a tiny 85 using Arduino. So it's a low cost Arduino compatible USB device, six pin GPIOS, four channel, 10 bit ADC, three PWM, 8K flash and 512K RAM is there on this board. So creating a repositories of Arduino compatible projects in form of books, open books. So this books can be uh, used by the uh, first year or second year students or uh, do it yourself uh, enthusiast people 
or students who wants to learn first what exactly is there. This board is very cheap. It comes in 100 uh, rupees kind of thing. So that's the price that we achieved is $100. So if you, I want to connect the temperatures, uh, how I get the thing. The UNO platform and all this thing, it's almost around 1500 rupees a start. So it may be difficult for us uh, do it yourself person to put that much money in it. So this is a very small board. You can experiment each and everything like sensors, display, keyboard, motors, everything on this board individually. You can't incorporate all the things on a single board. So developing a prototype low cost uh, internet of uh, based things, home automation system using open hardware and software. Major goal of this project is uh, IoT, which is Internet of Things, which is running a lot these days, which is going to uh, have this small Arduino uh, devices which are located at various places to control the home automation system, either through RF or IR link. So this has to be decided during the internship program that you have to look. So what are the advantage, what are the disadvantage? everything so because this is a very scratch project from the scratch everything has to be built any questions because major of the things as i am telling you each uh, project has been divided into two parts one is the software part and other one is hardware part hardware part is very clear from the diagrams and everything but software part you have to work uh, on android platforms okay thanks <laughs>